Hey, it's Rob from Dowdle Family Farms, and today I'm setting up fence posts. There's about six acres of pine and hardwoods in this uh, woodlot over here. There's a ditch here I'm fencing pigs out of. So what I'm doing is I'm setting posts uh, along this gravel road that runs along the woods and then uh, setting up two more posts down here. So today I thought I'd show you how we set posts for our fences here at Battle Family Farms. First thing you'll notice is I'm using a uh, six to eight inch treated post. I usually prefer using Bodoc, also known as Osage Orange um, posts. You can cut green posts, stick them in the ground, and they will last uh, four or five decades with no trouble. These treated posts will last, um, a six to eight inch post will last anywhere from uh, 25, 20 to 30 years, as long as they're set in gravel. Some people put them in concrete and they just don't last as long as concrete. Something about either the acidity or the um, alkaline nature of concrete, one of those two, the post will rot off just above the concrete. Um, so we use pea gravel. It's cheaper. Uh, it's really a lot faster when you're setting a lot of posts. Uh, it doesn't take very long, as you'll see once you get the hang of it, uh, and they last a lot, a whole lot longer. Anyway, so come join me, and I'll show you how we set posts at Battle Family Farms. I meant this post hole to be a little bit straighter, um, you'll, but the fence will come from this direction over here and it'll run down that way. So basically the tension will be pulling the post that way and that way. So I'll pull this post in this back corner um, of the hole and I'll fill in this end of the hole. So you'll notice that the post hole is dug at an angle. I did not mean to have this severe of an angle, but I often put a little bit of an angle depending on where the tension in on the post is going to be. Uh, in this case, that most of the tension from the post will be pulling this way. Uh, so in along your field of sight, um, but it'll also be coming from the, your left uh, over there. There will be a short run of wire there, but a longer run of wire will be pulling tension from this side. So what I'll do is I'll move. What I do is I set the bottom of the post as far as I can on that end toward the tension. So I'll pull the leverage will kick the bottom of the hole that way and I'll put a little gravel in the bottom right. Here. Make sure that pull that way. So once I put a little bit of gravel in the bottom of the hole, I tamp it or pack it. Anything will work. The heavier it is, the better. Um, this is just, uh, I guess, an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, something like that. Galvanized pipe that we've used for ever since I was in high school. put the tension, we put
Well, I put too much gravel in the bottom and I've packed it too much now. That is most unfortunate. There we go. There's not as much tension on these posts as there are on many of our others. For one, there will only be one wire uh, about a little above waist height. The others will be right along the ground level. So they won't have the leverage to pull as much as it is up here. If I were using this post on a perimeter fence for cattle that have a wire about chest high, a third wire about waist high, a second wire about waist high, and a lower wire about knee high, especially if it were on a run that were nearly half a mile long like some of them are, it would be critical to redo this post. Again, this will be good enough. It'll hold tight and be fine. The other thing is probably what's going to happen is when I subdivide the six acre lot into different paddocks, I'll set another post over here and use this as an entrance to get in and out and uh, may subdivide several paddocks off of these posts so this post won't be used that much anyway. Before I subdivide these other paddocks though, uh, I've got another 34 acres to fence in so that the pigs can make the most of the masts from wild grapes and acorns, a few beaches, and few hickories over in that area as well. So that's how we tamp post, how we set post here at Dartle Family Farms. I'll take you along as I put in these other two as well. I'll probably fast forward that clip so you don't waste as much time. But you can see the entire process from beginning to end and how quickly it goes. Um, I'll come back and re-tamp this after I get tension on the fence lines and uh, then I'll tighten them again. Um, and they'll be good and tight and ready to go. quite a 
workout when setting these posts. And that post, there was very little room, only about an inch, inch and a half of room around the base of the post and the hole. So it did not use much gravel and it was a lot quicker to tamp. Anyway. So that's it for setting posts. I've set three posts in the time recorded this video. When the posts are in the hole, the holes are drug, I can average setting a post every four to five minutes, but that requires a lot of fast, hard work and it's not very sustainable. But in the time it took you to watch whatever portion of this video you watched, I could have set several more. It just took longer because of recording. Uh, I can't count the dozens of posts, probably hundreds of posts over the years that we've set this way. Um, the first three or four may seem awkward if you're setting a lot of them, but it goes very, very quickly once you get into the routine and once you build the rhythm and the muscle memory of actually tamping uh, the gravel down in the post. So it's Rob from Dattle Family Farms signing off and I'll get back with you later and show you how we string up the electric fencing and the wire. Uh, take care. Have a great day.